before you can use AppPoint Fly to perform your Microsoft 365 tenant to tenant migration for your workspaces such as SharePoint and Teams, and for things like your mailboxes from Exchange, you need to do a little bit of configuration. The first part of that being setting up the Fly app. The Fly app's purpose is for authentication and communication from your AppPoint Online Services tenant where the Fly application runs into your Microsoft 365 tenants. Yes, I said tenants, because think about it. If you're going from a tenant to another tenant as part of your migration, Fly will need to be able to communicate with each one of those. So you install an app in each. For our purposes here today, I'm gonna to walk you through just doing one so we can see what the process looks like. I've logged into the Fly for the first time after kicking off a trial, and we have the wizard that pops up to tell us you need to install the Fly app. Down at the bottom right, I click Create an App Profile. The screen that pops up is prompting me for my credentials for that first tenant where I want to install the app. Now note, this is not going to capture the credentials. All this is doing is essentially asking you for authorization to connect into the tenant and install the Enterprise app. If you've previously logged into Microsoft 365 in that browser, it will remember you and you need to be a global administrator to be able to do this, to authorize the app's installation. If not, you would be able to paste in your email address at this point, followed by your password. In this case, you can see I previously logged in, so I'm just gonna click this. And then it's going to show me all the different permissions that the Fly app will have. User profiles, teams, site collections, teams channels, and so on. The reason it needs these permissions, of course, is because any of those things could be part of your migration. So if I scroll all the way down towards the bottom and click Accept, it is now installing the app. It takes us back into AppPoint Online Services, where we can see that the Fly app has been installed in Microsoft 365. If you would like to verify that, you can go over and log in to Microsoft 365 go into your admin console, and then go into Azure Active Directory Admin Center. On the left, click Enterprise Applications, and here we have the app for AppPoint Fly. With this app in place, your Fly application will now be able to connect into that tenant anytime you try to run any type of Fly operation, anytime you try to execute on any aspect of a Fly migration project. Now, please note, the one thing that the app does not get permission-wise automatically is Exchange Administrator, the Exchange Administrator role. We've left that one out on purpose because Exchange Administration is so highly privileged, we didn't want to make the assumption that you were going to be doing an Exchange-to-Exchange -exchange migration, which would result in us over-permissioning the app if you were not going to do that. But if you need that, you have a couple of different choices. First of all, you could use a service account. A service account with global administrator role, for instance, would automatically have the necessary exchange permissions. I do have a service account set up in here and I will add that. I'll show that in a moment. If you would like to give that role though to the app, you can do that as well. To do so, over on the left-hand side here in the Azure Active Directory Admin Center, we go to Azure Active Directory, we go to Roles and Administrators, and we scroll down until we find Exchange Administrator. Click that, and then at the top, Add Assignments. If you search for AvPoint, it will find the AvPoint Fly app. Select that and click Add. And that's it, now you're all set to perform all your exchange activities if doing an exchange to exchange tenant to tenant migration. Now I mentioned a minute ago, a service account. A service account said can also handle that as well. And that's because a service account with global administrator permissions automatically has exchange included. We do recommend that you use a service account with AvPoint Fly, but not just for the reason I mentioned a moment ago, because that makes it sound like I pick one or the other. App authentication and communication is Microsoft's preferred method at this time in order to try to minimize the chance of things like throttling. 
Service accounts have been around for a really long time and the nature of the communication through a service account is just one that makes itself a little bit more prone to getting throttled. So why do we recommend that you actually do both? Because that way, the app can do and handle whatever it needs to. But if it needs some kind of functionality that's better supported through the service account, then the service account will be invoked, but only in that case. We refer to this as fidelity, meaning essentially you're just covering all your bases. So how would I do that? Well, also here in Azure Active Directory Admin Center, we would go into Users, and then you would click New User up at the top to create the user. I've actually pre-staged this here for us and given it the global admin role just because it's the simplest way to do that. If you have additional security concerns, you can of course go and pick very, very specifically what you want it to have access to. Please refer to your Fly User Guide or reach out to someone at AvPoint if you have any questions around this. Now, to tell Fly about the service account is very simple. If I come over here and I copy this email address, I can go over into AvPoint and go to Service Account and click Create. We will give it a name that's just used in AvPoint Online Services. Now I'm calling it Fly Service Account with the assumption that I'm only using AvPoint Fly. Of course, that service account can be used for all of the other applications in AOS as well, such as Cloud Backup, for instance, provided it has all the appropriate permissions. I'm going to paste my username in, and now I'm going to put in the password. To verify I've entered those credentials properly, I click Validation Test, and once my test is validated, I click Save. So now I've got my app for the tenant. I've got my service account also for that same tenant. As I mentioned back at the beginning of the video, in order to ensure when you're doing a tenant-to-tenant -tenant migration, that Fly will be able to interact with, to authenticate into and communicate with the different tenants, you will want to do this for each of your separate tenants. So I would follow the exact same process for installing the app in my destination tenant, and I would follow the same process for creating the service account in the destination tenant, come back over here and enlist it in AOS. Thanks for watching this short video on installing the Fly app in Microsoft 365 and setting up a service account.